Hi, I'm Tommy and welcome to this first video in my Finite State Machine tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. In this tutorial series I'll be showing you how to build a Finite State Machine, or FSM for short, which will allow you to build simple but relatively manageable AI for your games. FSMs have been around in game development for a long time and have been used in a variety of games over the years with the technique largely popularised by Half-Life way back in 1998 all the way to even more recent titles such as the 2016 reboot of Doom. I'm going to be focusing on how to make a relatively simple state machine here in Unity, but if you want to learn more about the theory of how they work and when best to use them, head on over to my other channel AI in Games where I host an AI 101 episode that goes into a lot more detail. So first of all, what are we going to make? On screen now you can see a relatively simple example when I have a single character that moves around the environment. It's patrolling a fixed set of points, and once it reaches a particular point, it will wait a certain amount of time before moving back to the move state. However, I have a little player character here that I can move around, and in this instance, if I move that character close enough to the patrolling AI, it will decide to chase me. It keeps moving to the last known position it has of me, and then once it can't find me any longer, it stops at the last known position for a short while, and then it goes back to patrolling again. This sort of character would be ideal for a stealth game or even a shooter, provided we added another state for attacking the player, but I want to focus on these three core states given they're pretty easy to put together – idle, patrolling and chasing. Now in order to do that I'm going to write a whole bunch of new code, but I'm also going to be reliant on the Unity navigation mesh tools in order for the character to move around the environment. Now if you don't know how to use a nav mesh, go check out my other nav mesh tutorials on Table Flip Games which I've linked to in the description and is available on the card at the top of the screen now. Ok, so in this first video I'm going to focus on building a state. A state will be a behaviour that the state machine will execute. It will maintain a behaviour every frame and checks whether that behaviour needs to continue to run or have the finite state machine change to another one. Now once again this is a pretty basic setup, but it should be enough for many of you starting out. Once this is in place, we'll come back to crafting each behaviour we need as a state, as well as the state machine itself in subsequent videos. I'm running this project in Unity 2018.2.14 F1, but it should be fine to write this project in most Unity versions from around version 5.1 onwards. So I've already got my starting project here, which was a new 3D project in Unity, and I built up the testing environment that I'm going to use. It's just a simple environment made out of cubes as well as my player character that can move around an environment pretty easily, as well as, you know, I've just thrown a bit of post-processing on it so it, you know, it looks really nice when you put it on the camera. Nothing particularly fancy there. I also have this big cube that's just sitting in the centre of the environment because that's actually going to be my non-player character that I get working using the finite state machine. Naturally, you might have an existing environment you're working in, so I'm not going to spend too much time forcing you to rebuild what I have here. However, if you are looking to replicate this, some key things to note is that all the objects here have colliders and are reliant on rigid body physics and their own player character and on the player character. You'll also note that I've made a variety of distinct materials for the wall, the player, the ground, but also I have actually created already three distinct materials for the non-player character. And one of the reasons for that is that when the character is moving, and you saw already in the footage, what I'm actually doing is I'm changing the material that's being applied to that renderer on the, on the object every time we change state. And it's just a really simple way for me to visualise that those changes are happening and that the AI is actually executing as intended. And so that's it, it's nothing fancy, just some pretty standard Unity implementation. So I'm going to create a new class. Let's actually start by doing that. I'm going to go in, actually first of all I'm going to create a new older. And I'm just going to call it FSM. And then I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. And I'm going to call it Abstract FSM State. Now I've called it abstract FSM state because it's going to be an abstract class which handles all the core behaviour of what a state should do but then the later state classes we make will inherit from it. If you've never used an abstract class before it's really useful for this kind of implementation given it means we cannot create an instance of this type in the game world but only of the types that inherit from it. This is very useful if you're looking to have a lot of classes all share the same basic variables and methods as well as some core logic I've left some links to some other useful videos and docs you can use to brush up on abstract classes if you've never used them before, but I'm going to cover a lot of the main talking points here as I build up the code. So first of all I'm going to open it up and get into Visual Studio. And I'm going to make a couple of quick changes so that it's actually an abstract class. So first of all, 
I actually have to declare it as an abstract class. So let's just... I'm just going to take everything out for a minute. So I, I get it to a point that I'm happy. And now the other thing is I'm going to do is I'm also going to get rid of using mono behavior and I'm going to get it to inherit from scriptable object. Now, if you've never used a scriptable object, these are very similar to normal components that inherit from mono behavior. But the big difference is they don't need to be attached to a game object in order for them to work. Why is that useful? Well, for this example, we're going to build up three states in the FSM, idle, patrol and chase. Now, if those were all inheriting from mono behavior to become unity components, it would mean I'd need to create an empty game object for each state or add them all to one game object. This could get really messy if you have a finite state machine with a large number of possible states as well as storing them in prefabs to load in when you need them. This isn't to say you can't do it that way, and if you want to do it that way, you know, you can, go ahead. But for me, I like the idea of having them as scriptable objects that I can just plug in whenever I want, and this will hopefully make more sense to you, a video or two down the line once I've actually got them fully working. Okay, to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three methods that I think are probably the three most important methods that I need to do this. First of all, we're going to have an interstate method. And what that's telling me is that when I am in a if I'm using a particular state in my finite state machine, let's just have it return true for a second. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit so you can see it a little clearer. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. What I want that to do is that whenever we actually are going to take a state and execute it in the state machine, I want it to enter that state for the first time. And when it enters it, it's going to do a little bit of configuration. Maybe it's got to do a little bit of logic, but also I want to make sure that it enters the state successfully and there are no errors. And so provided it's successfully entered the state, then it can actually do whatever it needs to do. And then I also want to be able to exit a state. So let's see if we can do that without making a spelling mistake public bool exit state and that's also going to be it's going to be essentially the opposite of enter state so initially I'm wanting to enter the state make sure that everything's configured correctly and there are no issues and then this time round I want to make sure I exit the state and everything's fine and then also in amongst all this I want to be able to do an update to the state going to make that a void. I can't think of a reason right now why I want to make that return boolean. And so this will be slightly different. So this, what this will mean is that in the finite state machine on every tick of the game, I'm going to tell the finite state machine, update the current state that's active in the state machine. And to do that, I want to have an update state method. This is kind of distinct from, you know, I could actually have just had it use update as part of, you know, traditional mono behavior. But then if I do that, I, ha I don't have any way of constraining it to stop that state actually processing on every tick. Here, I'm actually going to restrain whether or not it can update on that tick. Now, before I really get into this, there's a couple of things I want to do. First thing is, I'm actually going to declare both enter and exit state as virtual. And this will mean that we use this permutation of this method by default but then any subclasses that inherit from abstract FSM state will subsequently be able to override this if I want. And, you know, you're thinking, okay, I don't really understand what this is. Hopefully this will make a little bit more sense to you once this demo fleshes out a little bit. But also, I'm going to actually exploit the abstract class that I've got here and declare update state as an abstract method. Now, if you've never seen an abstract class before, you're going to think, what the hell did he just do? This is one of the really cool things about using an abstract class. I've just declared that method, but I don't have to write it. What I've said here is this is now an abstract method. So any class that inherits from abstract FSM state will have to write the body of code that this that actually is update state. So whenever I create a new state class, and I'm going to create three, I'm going to have idle state, patrol state, and chase state, all of them are going to have to write the update method. They're going to have to write their own update state. But if they, do, if they don't need to, they don't need to write their own enter and exit state because I've already written them as virtual methods. And on the flip side, if they really need their own enter and exit state, they can override the existing one. Now, the reason that uh, both enter state and exit state are there is I want to add one last thing to this particular video just to get the ball rolling. 
And that is that I'm going to add an execution state or enum that I'm able to monitor. I'm going to have public enum execution state. And I'm going to add four completed and terminated. And the reason for this is I want to be able to have a look at the current state and be able to quite clearly delineate is this state actually working? Is it finished executing? Now, these are really simple things. These are really just um, to allow me to know whether or not this state's executing. And that's not really for the state to worry about. It's for the finite state machine itself, which I'll write in another video. But right now, I just want to be able to quickly say that when I enter the state, I'm going to assume that when I actually am able to enter the state, that the execution state is active. And to do that, I'm actually going to have to, I'm actually going to create a, up here, I'm going to have a property. I'm going to give it public get but a protected set. So this is actually written as an inline property in C Sharp. Um, I could actually do this in a different way. So what I'll do is I'll quickly remove it and I'll show you the long way to do it and then the way that I'm going to keep it. The other way I could do this is if I actually said public execution state, execution state, and then I would actually need to have a variable for this, which I'll give it, yeah, if I did this and then I said return execution state and down here, execution state equals value. So this is more the kind of, and also, yeah, I wanted the set to be protected because I only want the state itself to be able to change what the execution state is of the state, if you get that sentence. Now, the thing is, this is the long rendered way of, of doing this. And if I wanted to have greater control over whether or not that value is set, then I would actually do it this way. But I don't really need to do that. It's just one variable. And I just want to be able to clearly dictate where you can read it from and where you can set it from. So this is all me just doing it as one inline property. So if I just go back up here, put it back in. Oops. There we go. So that's nice. I'm quite happy with that. And then what I can clearly say in each of them is I can say e execution state equals execution state dot active. And here I'm going to say yeah, we'll just say execution state equals execution state got completed. Now, there might be a reason where terminated is occurring, and that might be something in the update breaks and it forces it out. And this might be something, I don't even know if I'm actually going to get around to using that in this demo, but it makes sense to me to start thinking about failure states. Failure states within my states, I really need to work on the terminology here. But the idea that I'm executing a state in my finite state machine and it breaks. And then what do I do about that? The last thing I'm going to do just for this video, and we're going to keep fleshing out this example in every new video I release, is that I want to make sure that the execution state is set to none when we first create this state and it's active in the game world. Uh, so to do that, what we'll do is... I'm going to go into... I'm going to create two new ones. I'm going to make them both virtual as well, so we can override them if we really need to. Actually, no, we don't need two. We'll just need one. We're going to do it on... Uh, on enable. And I'm going to say execution state equals execution state dot none. And that's just clearly telling me, okay, this state isn't active yet. And the reason for that is that my finite state machine is going to then be responsible for setting up a state and telling that state to go. That's how that's going to work. Okay, so I think this is a good point for us to wrap up for this first video because we've got a really simple state code and it's just this abstract class which is able to dictate whether or not the, the state itself is in an active mode but also we're able to clearly capture when we're entering a behavior and we're going to update that behavior on a given tick and then also when we exit that behavior. Now, what I need to do over the next two videos is I'm going to build the first state. I'm going to build the idle state that we're going to use in the state machine. And that 
It sounds really simple, but it's actually going to be a lot more complicated than you, you might think. I'm going to create a state where the character doesn't move. Now, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that might be more complicated. Because first of all, if we've got the navigation mesh agent that's attached to the character, and we're going to do that in the next video, I'm going to add a nav mesh agent to the character so it can move around. We need to make sure the character stops. We need to make sure that the character's not going to move around or do anything. And then we're just going to, we've got to make sure then when we go into enter state that the nav mesh agent is configured, that the character stops moving and all these other things. So there's a lot of little small conditions that I'm going to check. So it sounds like I'm over engineering it, but it's actually going to make a lot more sense uh, when you get that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build the finite state machine itself. And the first thing it's going to do is just run the idle state. That means we've got an AI character that amazingly does nothing, but it does nothing through its AI code, which I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited about that prospect. This has been part one of the Finite State Machine tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials like this. And plus, all of our tutorials are supported over on Patreon. So if you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics, and even get access to all the materials from this tutorial, including all the code that I've written, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in part two.